Hey everybody, welcome to the Flatiron Suning Question of the Week. This week our question comes from Jay Figueroa215, who wants to know about twin scroll turbos. So I guess the first place to start is, what is a twin scroll turbo? Sure, so twin scroll turbo, um, it's a variation on what you think of as a conventional turbo that just kind of gathers all the exhaust together and, and sends it through the turbo. Twin scroll pairs up the, the opposite pulses of the engine and, and keeps them separate as they go into the turbo so you have two different entry points into the hot side, hot side of the turbo. Uh, it utilizes an equal length manifold so that those it's a it's a more optimal pairing of the exhaust pulses. It's an equal length manifold so that you have the same distance traveled for all the cylinders of the engine to go into the turbo. And then a, a full true twin scroll turbo has two volutes all, all the way through the hot side of the turbo to keep those exhaust pulses even and going over the turbine to help it spool up. Uh, spool earlier. So because of its equal length design and the optimal use of the exhaust pulses, it's, it is, the idea is it's a more efficient way to spin up the turbine for a turbo, which should give you better response, better performance. Okay, so that sounds good. I've decided I want to convert my car to twin scroll. Sure, sure. How do I do it? There is actually a lot involved with it. Um, as, you, as you would think, because you're keeping these two pulses completely separate, they're now for a twin scroll manifold, you need two pipes that are going to keep those exhaust pulses completely separate. On the Subaru specifically, uh, you have to have an, an oil pan that will clear the twin scroll manifold because it is a unique, uh, it's a unique shape. So uh, pretty much any of the 06 and up STI oil pans or 2.5 liter oil pans will clear the twin scroll manifolds, but none of the other older ones will. Um, you also need a different up pipe. So your up pipe now has two tubes instead of one because again, you're keeping those pulses separate. Um, the bracket that holds the turbo in place for a twin scroll turbo is different because the footprint of that uh, hot side of the turbo is bigger, so you need that um, that different bracket. The exhaust flange on the turbo is different, so you need a, a twin scroll downpipe because a, a standard downpipe will not bolt up to a twin scroll turbo. And the weird one is uh, because you've now got in each tube only pulses from the uh, two cylinders of the exhaust, you can't put an O2 sensor in just one of those pipes because you'd only be looking at half of the engine. So you have to do a little bit of wiring. Uh, the twin scroll cars actually move the front O2 sensor behind the turbo into the bell mouth. So you have to move that, that O2 sensor back. But if you do all of that, and so replace all the exhaust and then put on the turbo, that, that's all that it takes and then you can put the turbo on. Okay, so I've done all that. Yep. Is it worth it? I'm gonna say no. Uh, in our experience, the answer is no. Uh, let's go back to 2013, 2014. So we're building our Pikes Peak car for the first time Pike speed is a demanding race. There's a lot of high speed flowing sections, but the middle section is really tight, really technical, a lot of low speed corners. We knew that we wanted the best possible power band, the most usable power that we could get. Um, and so we landed, because we were building a car from scratch, decided, all right, we're gonna go and do a twin scroll conversion because it should be better in all accounts compared to a single scroll. Um, so the first turbo that we put on the car, in fact, is this turbo right here. This, uh, it's a twin scroll DOM 3 uh, from Blauk uh, Performance. Right out of the gate, we started having a little bit of, well, we weren't, we weren't getting the results that we expected. The turbo was not spooling up very quick at all. It was, we weren't getting to full boost until after 5,000 RPMs. This is on a stock EJ255, a 2.5 liter engine on race gas. Um, and the other problem that we had is we couldn't get it to make more than 18 pounds of boost. And when I say that we couldn't get it to do more than that, that's with 100% duty cycle, um, just trying everything that we could, the turbo just would not make more than 18 pounds holding the wastegate shut uh, all the time. Uh, we ended up having a, a turbo failure fairly early on, so that we replaced with the second DOM3 thinking that it was a bad turbo, and we got the same results. Now, we actually ran the car that way for about three, maybe four years. Um, and I would argue that it is, as much response as we were losing, the, the lack of torque is probably why our five-speed transmission lasted as long as it did. Um, and the top end was really good but we knew that we wanted more. Um, we ended up falling into a VF37, uh, which is a twin scroll turbo. It's a twin scroll version of the uh, VF39, the, the STI turbo. We only made 300 horsepower with that, but it was so much smaller that it spooled up a lot more like we were expecting. Uh, it made a good deal of torque. And that was a way better turbo on the car, but you know it just didn't have that much power. Um, 
We've also since tried DOM 1.5 uh, twin scroll and then the TurboDynamics LM450 twin scroll turbo. The TurboDynamics definitely worked the best for us and um, that's what we ran basically until we had to switch away from it. That's the turbo that we ran and that gave us the best overall response uh, on the car. So why did that one work better? I think it's because the, so TurboDynamics is a company out of the UK. So they've been building turbos for a long time for the JDM Supers that came with the two liter engine and the twin scroll turbos. So the smaller displacement engine, they had smaller hot side twin scroll turbos to get the turbo to spool up more quickly. Versus, you know, something like the block turbos where you, they have the full twin volutes all the way around the exhaust housing, very large exhaust housing. And, and because of the extra displacement, you know, uh, maybe the spool was not as great of a uh, consideration as it was for the TurboDynamics one. For those guys, it's a, it's a much smaller exhaust housing and they're only keeping the exhaust pulses separate until they enter the exhaust housing and then it basically converts back to a single spool turbo. Um, the LM450 and the DOM15 are basically the same size turbo, roughly speaking. They're both in the Garrett 30R family um, and the LM450 spool up significantly faster. Um, there's, Basically, we had an engine failure. We needed a twin scroll turbo that we could overnight. The only thing we could find at that point was the, the DOM15. So we actually went from the LM450 to the DOM15 and then back again. Um, and the DOM15 gave us similar numbers, but it spooled up about 500 RPMs later than the LM450. So what's the Pikes Peak car running now? Right, so now that we've switched to a dry sump oiling system, the twin scroll headers did not clear the dry sump oiling system. In fact, no headers that we've tried other than the standard unequal length headers cleared the dry sump oil pump on the bottom of the engine there. So we've had to convert back to single scroll and in an unequal length manifold. Now the interesting thing is with the with the turbo dynamics turbo, because of the hot side that they use, all we had to do to convert that turbo is just bolt on a single scroll hot side. So we took the exact same turbo, took the tr twin scroll housing off, which you can see on the table here, bolted on the single scroll housing and put it back on the car. The odd thing is Converting to an unequal length manifold and the same turbo just with, with the standard single scroll housing, the turbo actually spooled up a little bit sooner. We began about 200 RPMs of spool time versus the twin scroll. So in, in our experience from everything that we've tried, the twin scroll just didn't really work. It, it, it was not as optimal as it, it seemed. Um, the best thing I can say about it is the, the top end response, like say over 5,000 RPMs and then coming back onto boost seemed to be better with the twin scroll versus the single scroll. But in terms of overall power band, it just didn't gain us enough to justify all the extra complexity that is required to switch to a twin scroll setup. So back to the beginning, is it worth converting your car to, swim, to a twin scroll? I'm gonna say no. From, based on our experience, I would say it's not worth all of the extra complexity. You know, having to switch out the full exhaust manifold, the full downpipe, um, you know, move your wiring around, there's just so much involved to get a twin scroll turbo to fit, and there's so many good options for conventional single scroll turbos as well. I mean, at this point, I would say rather than having to switch to a twin scroll to get a turbo that's going to give you a broad power band, just just pick a good, well designed single scroll turbo, and you're going to I think you're going to be just as happy as if you got the perfect twin scroll turbo setup going as well. Awesome. And it's a lot less brain damage. Definitely. Well, thanks for checking out the question of the week. Remember, we do these every week, and you can submit your questions in the comments below or send us a message on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay tuned.